Oh, it's all... Are it, we on? It's us, yes. One night I met you in Chasen's. Yes, sir. We were both having dinner, not at the same table. You were sitting with a, a group, five or six other people, and I walked up to you, not knowing you, and I said, I think you're one of the greatest straight men I've ever seen. And you took umbrage at this. I was trying to compliment you, and you thought I was trying to insult you. I still think you're one of the greatest straight men I've ever seen. And I'm still taking umbrage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, true. I, I, I appreciate it's it. It's true. I want to tell you something. There has never been a good comedian that didn't have a good straight man. Oh, you go down man. through the ages of all the great comedians. They hmm. always had a great straight man. In my case, it happened to be Chico, because he was my brother. Yeah. But he did what a normal guy, if it hadn't been my brother, would have been doing for me. But and, Chico also, I'm sorry. And I thought he was offended that night. Yeah. No, no, actually, what it was, you've told me that since, as a matter of fact, one evening I'll probably over tell you it, again when I see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I thought no I'd pride. explained it to you one night over at Sidney Sheldon's house when we were there for dinner to see a movie, and you told me that. And I appreciated it very much, because not very many people, when you're working as a team, uh, ever say very much to this the straight half of the team. The straighter uh, half, let's say. Well, I don't think um, the straight man means anything, but it's very yeah. important. And it's, uh, well, you know, for a long time you get off stage and uh, people will go rushing right past you and, and pat Dick on the back and say, you are the funniest son of a gun I ever saw and I'm standing there ordering a drink, you know. Uh, yeah. And so the night that Groucho did that to me at Chasen's, number one, it's a very unusual thing for anybody to say. Number two, here is the guy who is the classic comedian to all people in comedy, mm -hmm. talking to me personally, which is a little discomforting in, in the first place. Yeah. And in the third place, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm really fairly uncomfortable when people say things like that to me. I don't know what to say. Well, I, I didn't I, say I really it deliberately to, uh, and, and so I was, I was, to offend I, you. I, I wasn't offended. I was simply a little embarrassed and, and uh, awestruck at the company I was in. Well, I'm flattered by that, but the whole thing is a big lie. <laughs> <laughs> now here's your chance I to be a straight man. <laughs> I yeah, meant right. it when I said it, and I still mean it. Oh, you're very nice. And I you. watch you, and I marvel at the equanimity and the style and class. Do you ever get you ever get tired of people copying you? We, you know, we. No, I regard it as a, as flattery now. It's a whole style. You know, there mm -hmm. are some things. For instance, one of one of the very talented members of our company is Richard Dawson. Dickie Dawson, and there are certain things he is cast in which can only be read a la Groucho. And that's, that's what right. you see in many cast directions. There are many script directions. You'll see red like Groucho. Or a la or Groucho. A la right. Groucho. And, you know, it's a style. There's it's a, and it's the an other individual hand, definition. I regard it as flattery when people do that. You should. Yes. Walter Matthau does that. He told me, he says, I've been imitating you all my life. Yeah. And he told me, that he said the night that the odd couple opened in New York, his wife, who was used to be Soroyan's wife, I don't know if you know her, mm. very bright and shy. <laughs> Nobody. He says nothing to do with it except I'm trying to identify the character. Okay. And the night that he said goodbye to his wife and he walked to the elevator in New York on his yeah. way to do the opening night of Odd Couple, she called him back from the elevator. And she says, Walter, tonight, not quite so much Groucho Marx, huh? But he took that kindly, I assume. He's proud of it. He's yeah. always telling me that There's he's a line say. reading that you do, I mean, a kind of inflection that has just entered the world of comedy. It's low. I, you know, I used to love, on, on, on Groucho's uh, television show, I used to love to wait. I waited for the commercials because he has the most insincere voice in the world. You know? <laughs> when he starts to tell you something is so, you know that it isn't. This, <laughs> this is true. This is true. Great, one of the great con men. Yes, I would have made it on the Chautauqua with you. Mm -hmm. I could have been a... Let me tell you one line. The first show I was in was called The Man of Her Choice. It was a melodrama. Yeah. And in the end of the first act, there were some papers. There were very important papers, and the villain had gone to visit her in the hospital, the leading girl. Mm -hmm. And just as he picks up the papers from up under the pillow, and he starts to leave when I walk on. I was 15 then, and I pull out a gun and I say, stop, move one step and I'll blow you to smithereens, and the chitin came down. 
That's all there is to it. It's, it's nothing funny. It was tragic. <laughs> and I, was that was your... six, I was getting six dollars a week in this show. Weren't you tempted to get a laugh with the line or do something no, silly? No, I didn't know that it was funny. It wasn't. It was funny to the audience, but not yeah. to me. I was sincere. <laughs> From that day on, you've been one of the great con men of our time. Well, the villain had tried to bind the couch on which he was lying. Oh, well, that's different. And he's a great study. He remembers the line to this day. You know, yes, I, mean, I was 15 have... years old. What is a smithereen, anyway? Does anyone I have no idea. Anybody Small know place what a outside Burbank. Boy, the smithereens. <laughs> Where? What is a smithereen? Does anybody know? If you know, call us with uh, the, what a smithereen is, and we'll be back after this message from our local station. I haven't found thank out what a smithereen is. I know. We must find out. Thank you, Dan, for being here. Thank you, Aaron. And thank you, Groucho. And I thanks to Debbie Reynolds. We'll get to the bottom of this. See you tomorrow night. Good night. Thank you.